guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscription button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. Before I get started, I just want to mention that you can still pre-order my book, The Prepared Graduate, if you haven't already. This book is really great for anybody. It's not just for people who are out of college. I think anyone who's starting early in their career, or even in the middle of your career, if you're interested in learning how to be a savage in your career, this book is definitely perfect for you. You can get it anywhere, Amazon, Target, Booktopia, all the links are in the description box. Make sure you guys pre-order my book, guys. Okay, welcome back to the Regulatory Affairs Explained series. This is episode two, and today we are going to be talking about requesting meetings with the FDA, meeting types and timelines, and so much more. So make sure you stick around and watch the entire video. I hope you guys are loving this series because I'm loving explaining all of these things to you guys. It's so fun and refreshing for me. So the first thing we're gonna talk about today are the different meeting types. So a lot of times you might hear people say type A meeting, type B meeting, type C meeting, and you're probably wondering what the heck are you talking about? Because something in regulatory affairs happens where everyone thinks everyone knows what's being said, so you never explain it. But that's why I'm here to teach you guys what they are. So a type A meeting is a meeting that would allow for a sponsor to get their application out of a place where it's stuck. I think that's the best way for me to put it. So when you submit your IND application, the FDA will review the application. And if they have any issues with it, they will put it on clinical hold at the end of its review cycle. So a type A meeting would be used to discuss a clinical hold or maybe to discuss a special protocol assessment so that you can get your application off hold and proceed with the development. After submitting your type A meeting request, you have to submit what's called a briefing package. And each type of meeting has completely different timelines. So for a type A meeting, you actually only have two weeks, 14 days to submit your briefing package. In your meeting request, what you'll put is the product name, the chemical name, chemical structure, who the sponsor is, the company. You'll give a brief description or background on the product, and then you'll go into your proposed questions. For your proposed questions, you wanna be clear. Whatever question you're asking, you wanna make sure that you're gonna get concrete advice at the end of the FDA answering that question. You don't wanna ask ambiguous things because then you're gonna get an ambiguous answer and then what was really the point of your meeting. For your proposed questions, after you give your proposed questions, you'll do a background. So if you're asking questions about manufacturing, of course you're going to wanna give a background on the manufacturing process or maybe you have questions about your methods, so you wanna give background on what your methods are. The meeting request doesn't have to be too crazy. It's really a high level document. I say anywhere from 10 to 15 pages is good, but then again, it depends on your product. Some people do like a 20 page meeting request, which is insane to me. It really can be brief. On top of that, in your meeting request, your proposed questions are exactly that, proposed, the draft, or your draft questions. You can't change them too much in the meeting package, but you can specify things later in the briefing package. Now for your briefing package, some people make it anywhere from 30 to 65 pages. Again, it depends on what you're talking about and what the type of meeting is, what you need the agency to really understand. And in the meeting package, you might put appendices like a protocol synopsis. If you're asking questions about the development of your protocol and you wanna get the agency's buy-in on how they feel about that strategy or how they feel about your protocol design or your study design. So in the briefing book, you give way more detail. All your questions are final and and like I said, for every type of meeting, I'm gonna talk about it later, but for every type of meeting, you have a different timeline of when you have to submit that briefing package. In the briefing package, you get a lot more detailed, which is why the document's a lot longer. You also put your final list of attendees. It's rare that more than like two regulatory people attend. I think for the most part, what I've seen is like the highest level regulatory person and then the second level regulatory person who's working on the project. So that might be like the director, executive director, head of regulatory, and then the secondary person is who's ever below that person in that department. That's what I've seen. And then on top of that, depending on what you're talking about, you may have someone from your CMC team there. You may have someone from non-CLIN there. You might have the CEO there. It really just depends on your company. Company. Every company also does their meeting requests and their briefing books very differently. You should have templates within your organization and within those templates, it literally tells you all the stuff that I just talked about in terms of what you're putting in it. But let me continue talking about the meeting types before I go too into meeting requests and briefing book, which I kind of already have. So the next type of meeting is gonna be a type B meeting. A lot of times those are gonna be your pre-IND meetings, your pre-BLA meeting, pre-NDA, pre-SBLA meetings, 
meetings. It's also going to be your end of phase meeting. So if you're nearing the end of your phase two or you're at the end of your phase two study and you want to have conversations with the FDA before having your phase three, that's what the type B meeting would be for. And with the type B meeting, it's normally scheduled within 60 days of receipt of the meeting request. And I forgot to mention the type A meeting is scheduled within 30 days of the meeting request. So for type B, your meeting is scheduled within 60 days and after you submit your meeting request. So let's say on January 1st, 2022, you submit your meeting request. 30 days after you have submitted that type B meeting request, you have to submit your briefing package. You have to. Then after the briefing package is received, you will have your meeting scheduled. So from the time your meeting request is submitted and the FDA receives it, 60 days from then is when your meeting will be scheduled. 30 days after you sent your meeting request is when you should submit your briefing package. I know it's a lot to think of, but as you work on more meeting requests and you submit more briefing books, you'll start to understand the types and when to submit things. You can also go on the FDA's website. They literally have a guidance for everything. And if you just look it up, they'll tell you what the timelines are for each uh, product. So the last type of meeting is actually type C and that's kind of for everything else that I haven't mentioned. Type C meetings don't get scheduled until 75 days after the receipt of your meeting request. And similar to type B, after you submit your meeting request for a type C meeting, let's say January 1st, you got 30 days to submit that briefing book and then your meeting will happen subsequently. So I think how these timelines relate to regulatory, regulatory is always responsible for the meeting request and the briefing book. You're the person who's gonna work with RegOps to dispatch it to the FDA and regulatory is probably the one that's going to be driving the meeting. Of course, they'll pass it off to respective people. For example, if you're asking like questions about manufacturing, you'll pass it to the manufacturing person and they'll help write the manufacturing section of the meeting request and briefing book. But you really are the sole owner of that document. So when you're thinking about the timelines, if there's like a company milestone where you have to start your phase one study by quarter three, you need to make sure you're thinking about when to have the meeting to get that advice from the FDA. Or if you have to have your IND filed by a certain time, make sure you schedule when to have that pre-IND meeting because you don't just submit a meeting request and then you get a meeting with the FDA the next day. It's not how it works. So with regulatory, you kind of have to be thinking of, okay, if we need this advice, when do we need to get this stuff in so it can happen when it needs to happen without delaying any business objectives, really. The other few notes that I wanted to make about briefing books and meeting requests and meeting types is the FDA can deny your meeting. They can say no. If they feel your questions aren't really all that complex or they're pretty easy, they'll give you a written response only. I've seen it happen all the time. And pharmaceutical companies hate that because it's better to have a conversation conversation with the FDA than to get written responses only because there's not much context and you can't ask follow-up questions. So you really want to make sure, you're, that's why it's so important how you craft these questions to the FDA. You have to really be strategic about it because it could trigger a written response only. So if you're in regulatory and you've been tasked with writing a meeting request or a briefing book, some documents that I recommend that you use to help you are going to be your IB, which is an investigator's brochure, or IMPD if this application is international, IMPD is essentially just what the CMC section would be in the US. A lot of times if you're working for like a contract research organization, they'll work with international people who have already filed their CTAs and they have a solid IMPD package and then now they're trying to come into the US. So you can use an IMPD to write your meeting request and get all the background information. You can use protocols, protocol synopses, but again, it depends on the questions that you're asking. That would only be relevant, example, a protocol would only be re relevant for clinical questions and then an IMPD would only be relevant for manufacturing questions. But an IB is probably the best place to start because it'll give you a great overarching view of what the product is. The other note is most meetings with the FDA are about one hour, 60 minutes. So I say a good rule of thumb is to have anywhere from, I think six questions is enough, but having anywhere from six to 10 questions is realistic. I think if you go above six questions, honestly, you're not gonna be able to cover all of them, but it depends on how complex your questions are. The FDA will likely end the meeting after six minutes. I've seen it go over by like five, six minutes. But for the most part, they're pretty firm on that timeline. You can ask for a face-to-face -face meeting, but with COVID, most meetings have been video conference or just a teleconference, but you can write face-to-face -face meeting, but most of the time it's just going to 
video conference. I don't know when people are going to start going back to the FDA and having face-to-face -face meetings, but that used to be like the best part for regulatory. People used to love it. They used to live for it. Be like, yeah, I'm going to Washington to meet with the FDA, or I'm going to like Amsterdam to meet with EMA. Although I don't know where the EMA is now with Brexit, but that was like the best thing that people loved about being in regulatory was being able to travel for meetings and have these conversations face-to-face. -face. Like it was the Holy grail. I've never had that experience, but I honestly would love to have a face-to-face -face meeting. The last thing I wanted to cover in meeting types of course we talked about type a type b type c and then we've talked about for type b meetings how it's eop which is end of phase that's another acronym people use people will say like eop2 end of phase 2 type b meeting these two meetings that i wanted to highlight for you guys are actually interact and pre ind so an interact meeting is a meeting with cber which we've already covered what cber is and i'm going to read to you guys what interact actually stands for because i think it's kind of weird how they came up with the acronym for it but interact stands for initial targeted engagement for regulatory advice on CBER products. So a lot of cell therapy company, regenerative medicine companies, companies that have really complex products and it's kind of difficult to understand the unique challenges in either manufacturing or just the clinical research, have the opportunity to engage with CBER and ask questions on what to do early, 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 early in their development process. So interact meetings are always amazing and I think anytime you can engage with the FDA, it's, I mean, why not? you're getting guidance right there from the source. The people who are gonna approve, approve your product likely or deny it. So an interact meeting is a non-binding meeting with the FDA, 60 minutes. It has a different timeline compared to type A and type B. I believe it has the same timelines as type C, but don't quote me on it. It might be 75 or 90 days, but you can go on the FDA's website and get timelines for that. So if you're working for a regen medicine company or a company that would have a product evaluated by CBER and it's really early in the development process, maybe you bring up the idea of having an interact meeting if they haven't already. The purpose of a pre-IND meeting is honestly just to gain support from the FDA on your proposed strategy. You are gonna talk about your proposed regulatory pathway. You're gonna talk about your proposed indication. You're gonna talk about your non-clinicals package and if it's sufficient to support your future application, if it's sufficient to proceed in doing whatever your next steps are. You might provide a protocol synopsis and ask if the trial design you have is sufficient. It kind of just depends on, again, what advice you're trying to get out from the agency. Some people don't have pre-IND meetings because they don't feel they need it. I think it's a good idea because you're getting that somewhat stamp of approval from the agency that's like, okay, we agree with your next steps. We agree with what you proposed and what you're trying to do next. We agree with your validated methods in regards to CMC and manufacturing. Whew, I feel like we covered a lot today, guys. We talked about so much. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am out of breath, but also I'm just so excited to still be doing this series. Make sure you hit that subscription button and turn on post notifications so you know when episode three drops. You don't want to miss episode three. If you've already learned so much in episode one and episode two, there is more coming and I cannot wait. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.